Hello everyone, my name is Paul Felix. I'm the founder of LeapFrog BI. Today I'm going to be addressing a question that I get asked pretty regularly, and that is, what exactly is a data warehouse? A data warehouse is, is a, it's a database, as the name implies, um, but it's actually a lot more than that. First of all, data does not originate in a data warehouse. Instead, we're going to go out to an organization's source systems, such as a CRM or customer relationship management system, your financial system, your HR system, uh, your operational systems, uh, flat files or master data. All this information is going to be collected or copied from those systems of record and brought into the data warehouse. So the data warehouse becomes a central repository with all of the company's relevant information. So that begs the question, why would we do such a thing? Why would we copy data that's already maintained, we know is current in these systems of record, and then place it into the central repository? Well, to answer that question, we need to really take a second and talk about how decisions are made and what is the impact of a decision or cumulative decision on an organization. I think we could agree that an organization's success is defined or depends on the cumulative ability of everyone in that organization's ability to create, to make good decisions or to make decisions that have successful outcomes. So if that's the case, then how do we enable decision makers to make good decisions? And by decision makers, I want to make sure I'm clear about that. We're not only talking about those very strategic decisions that are made by only the executives in the organization. Those are very important decisions, of course. But we're also talking about routine, operational decisions that are made on a day-to-day -day basis by everyone in an organization. So how do we enable this full spectrum of decision makers to make the best decision possible? Well, one way we do that is by providing decision makers with relevant, accurate information. A decision is best made when a decision maker understands the environment that influences that decision's outcome. And that environment is, is kind of twofold. First of all, we have an organization's internal information. We've talked about all these business systems already, CRM and financial and so on. But you also have external data, such as the weather, the physical environment. Uh, you have the financial environments or the, the markets. All of those external influencers also need to be brought into a data warehouse so that they can be integrated with internal data and provided to a decision maker such that that decision maker has the best possible understanding of the environment that impacts a decision's outcome. And this is why a data warehouse is potentially one of the most valuable assets that an organization can possess. All right, so why, once again, why would we take data out of the systems of record and put it in the central repository, the data warehouse? Why not just go straight to the systems of record and use that as a source of our information to empower all of these decisions uh, or, or to provide information for all of these decision makers? I'm going to provide four reasons why a data warehouse exists. Reason number one, single version of the truth. This is probably the most commonly cited reason for data warehousing. Uh, it, it, it spans a lot of different concepts. I'm going to give a couple of them here. One example is an organization may have a number of business systems uh, that track the same information. Uh, let's just talk about customer information. You may have customer information in a customer relationship management system. And then you may have customer information in your uh, financial system because you're tracking sales. And you may have customer information even in your operational systems potentially. It's very important that when a person asks for a list of customers that they get the same answer from day to day or from person to person. That won't happen uh, typically if you're trying to collect this customer information from each of your systems individually. So providing a single version of a truth is an important characteristic of a data warehouse. When we go to that data warehouse and we ask for a list of customers, it is the enterprise list of customers. Any business logic that needs to be applied has already been applied when the business user goes to that data warehouse to retrieve that information. Reason number two, performance. 
performance can really be broken down into two areas. Uh, first of all, let's assume that the data warehouse doesn't exist. In that case, we would have no option other than to go to where the data originates, which is the systems of record, to, again, empower those business users uh, to get the information they need to make better decisions. If we go to a system of record and we ask that system of record to support the type of reporting analytics uh, that we're talking about, decision support information, we're going to oftentimes bring those systems to their knees. And that's because, very simply, systems of record are designed for transaction processing. They're designed to read very small amounts of information and write very small amounts of information at a time. Think of a point of sale. Every time someone makes a purchase, that point of sale records a record that says, here's the purchase, here's the line items of that purchase, here's who purchased it, very small amounts of information. Now contrast that with our decision maker's requirement. A decision maker may ask to see um, the aggregated sales volume for a particular product quarter by quarter and give me the uh, comparison for the prior year's sales for those same products. That requires often millions uh, multiple multi-millions of records to be traversed and that type of question or query is going to often bring those systems to their knees which which has adverse impact uh, on the system uh, on the syst source system because it's no longer for focused only on um, serving as a point of sale system which is going to be uh, um, the performance of that's going to be deteriorated but it's now also trying to serve this decision support role. So the system of record impact is is uh, um, definitely a, a negative performance implication if we don't have a data, data warehouse. On the other side of the spectrum, the business user is expecting to get an answer to their question. And we are trying to provide that business user with the best uh, performance possible because we want them to use this information. We don't want them to go to some, some uh, uh, report and have to wait for five minutes or 10 minutes or an hour or possibly have the report delayed by days potentially because we have to batch process this thing to limit the impact on the source systems. So the user experience of the business user is another area where performance is critical. And a data warehouse, once again, it, one of the roles of the data warehouse is to deliver a well-performing repository. Whenever that user asks a question, the data warehouse is going to respond in a timely way because we're going to organize the data into data structures that are designed to support that type of question. Reason number three, simplicity. Applications have backends or databases that are highly normalized. And basically that means, once again, that they're designed to uh, carry out transaction processing. They're designed for very small reads and writes. That is perfect for applications, but it is not perfect for a business user trying to go out and collect a piece of information. Uh, once again, our customer example, if if you have a, uh, a business user that wants to get a list of customers and they're just going to one application, uh, such as let's use the customer relationship management system as an example. Well, that CRM system, it may store customer information in uh, two, three, a dozen or more tables and Consolidating that information into a single list of customers with all of the attributes that we want, such as the address, the phone number, uh, whatever it might be, the demographics of that customer, is often not at all a simple process. If you compound that problem by adding in two, three, four, or a number of an organization's applications or source systems, you have a situation that is um, just insurmountable for a business user to go out and try to achieve in any reasonable amount of time. So one of the roles of a data warehouse is to provide these users a simple way to navigate data. Whenever they go to the data warehouse and they ask for a list of customers, there it is, a simple list of customers. When they ask for a list of products, there it is. When they want to see the sales over the past year, no problem. Here's a date. Uh, you select the year you want and it, the, the information is filtered and returned for you very easily and intuitively. All right, reason number four, data persistence. This is very simple. Organizations uh, have certain needs. They, they want to persist their data in certain ways. That doesn't always align with the way source systems persist data. 
let's once again talk about a customer. An application may store customer information and uh, it, it may also allow, allow the business user that's interfacing with that application to update that customer information, such as an address. The application itself may or may not store a full history of that customer's record. In other words, the application may store only the current version of a customer's address, as opposed to keeping a full audit trail that says, well, at this point in time, the customer address was A. And then at this point in time, the customer address changed to B. A, a, I'm just giving one example of data persistence here, but an application has a certain behavior. It may, it may create or store the whole audit trail of a customer record, or it may store only the current version. If it's the current version, well, that doesn't support a number of, of uh, business requirements that an organization may have. Uh, as an example, if we want to know how a product um, is selling uh, across the last two years, month to month to month, and uh, we want to we want to break that analysis down by location. Well, if we only know a customer's current address, then that analysis is not possible. We have to know where the customer was at the time of the sale. So a data warehouse is going to persist data in a way that meets an organization's needs. If we need a full audit trail, we'll, we'll store that full audit trail regardless of how the source system decides to behave. Uh, source systems also archive data. They just simply take some data offline to limit the load on, on their databases. Again, a data warehouse is going to have a different set of requirements. Often, a lot of history is stored within a data warehouse, and that history is very important to establish key trends that, that uh, are used through different types of regression or analytics to determine what the future opportunity might hold. Um, so it, again, a data warehouse is going to serve as the uh, organization's area where data is persisted. Okay, so we talked about the four reasons why a data warehouse exists, and um, we also defined what a data warehouse is. Now, it's also important to define what a data warehouse is not, and that is it's not a product and it's not a technology. By a pro product, I mean it's not um, it's not Oracle, it's not DB2, um, it's not uh, 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 Microsoft SQL Server. It's not a product. That uh, products are very important, of course. Products and tools are all very important in implementing and maintaining and monitoring a data warehouse. But the data warehouse itself is not defined by any particular product. A data warehouse is not a technology. There's many ways of implementing a data warehouse. Um, and technology, again, is very important to successfully implementing a data warehouse. But regardless if the data warehouse is implemented in a, a relational database, and a, a multidimensional queue, but no SQL uh, technology, or if the data is um, stored in RAM or if stored on conventional disk, all of these things are, again, very important, but they don't define the data warehouse. Okay, so we talked about what a data warehouse is. It's a database. We know why we're creating a data, data warehouse. We're going to use it as a decision support system. We know why we're not going back to the systems of record. The four reasons that I gave were data persistence, simplicity, performance, and single version of the truth. And then we also know what a data warehouse is not. It's not a product. It's not a particular technology. So now you know exactly what a data warehouse is. Go out there. Get busy, build your data warehouse, contact LeapFrog BI, and we'll be happy to help.